Caroline Tilston. Over the next four weeks, I want to talk to you about transforming your garden. Why bother with your garden? Why try to make it better? Look down any street. Lots of people are quite happy to ignore their gardens and get on quite happily with their lives. For every garden that looks well loved, there are five or ten that are ill-kempt. So why bother? Well, there's the really practical reasons, like your garden may make up the major view for many rooms in your house. So, in improving your garden, you will be improving each room that looks out onto it. Gardens are usually bigger than a room inside the house. Even with small gardens, you have all this space outside, and it would be silly not to make the most of it. But, as well as these practical reasons, there are also more psychological ones. Gardens are important. The importance of a garden goes way beyond the traditional little niche of a place to do gardening. Most people I design for don't want to do any gardening at all, and if they do, it's way down on their list of priorities. No. Gardens today aren't primarily about gardening. They are places where you can escape, where you can be yourself, where you can create your own world. This marks gardens out from kitchens or any other room inside the house. A garden's use is defined by you. In a kitchen, you have to cook and wash up. In a bedroom, you have to have a bed. In the garden, well, what do you want to do? How do you want to feel? So it's really important not to define the garden by the old-fashioned idea of a place to grow stuff. It may be that is what you want to do, but if you release yourself from those constraints, so much more is possible. We have a very personal relationship with our gardens. Sometimes people are recreating a childhood dream. Sometimes a favourite holiday or mood. A few times, people have stayed in a particular hotel and want that same treatment for their outside space. And this is how it should be. We should be using our gardens to provide a bit of magic or a sanctuary. But doing what I do, I see so many cases where the opposite is true, where people really don't like their gardens. The garden gets on top of them. It's a battle, and they are almost afraid to go outside. Hopefully, after I've designed their gardens, they think differently. It's a wonderful job being a garden designer. I can change people's gardens in a way that will make them happier. And changing your garden can change the way you live at home. Open up more space. Create an area to sit and dream. A garden is something that can make you happy. And this is the most amazing thing about gardens. They can make you happy. Again, I don't think I could say that about a kitchen or a dining room, but change a garden and you have lasting, real rewards. So, throw off the traditional link to gardening and think about what will make you happy in the garden. So, designing your garden is about taking control of your space, organising it and getting it to work for you. For thousands of years, the upper classes, the rich people, knew how important and what a wonderful experience this is. They weren't bogged down by how to prune roses or what type of potato to grow. They realised, as many more people are beginning to realise, that gardens aren't about these prosaic things. They are about expressing yourself, showing off, yes, but also creating a world to enjoy full of surprises and follies, art and architecture. And now, for the first time in history, ordinary people can share in that wonderment, can share in the idea of creating your own space. Design is by its nature a space changer. It's not about putting a plant there or taking down a fence here. It's about changing the whole space to fit with your needs and wants, and this is what this course is about. You may not have the same scale and space, 
but you can have the same approach. So when in this first lecture I talk about what you want to do in your garden, keep an eye on that thought that the garden can be so much more than a space to go to garden. Thank you.